All right, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at curve sketching and actually drawing graphs using everything that we've learned in the past three videos and, of course, the earlier parts in the course. So, when we sketch graphs, we need to know three critical things. We need to know where our asymptotes are. So, if you remember, you take, you look for the domain of the function. You also look as the limit goes to infinity and negative infinity of the function. We need to know where our graphs are increasing and where they're going to be decreasing. We also need to know the concavity between intervals. So this means taking a look at our inflection points and second derivatives. And of course, a lovely fourth point, uh, you need to know where the points are. So you just uh, plug in some values into your function and see what comes out so you can sketch the rest of the curve nicely. So, as our first example, we have the function, its derivative, and its second derivative all given to you, just for the sake of making things simple. So, first, let's check our asymptotes. We have a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 1, which we know by looking at the denominator of our function. For our horizontal asymptote, we need to take a look as this function approaches infinity. So we have the limit as x goes to infinity of x over x minus 1. You should be able to see very quickly that this is 1 due to the uh, little shortcut that I taught you. So we know there's a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 1. You can also see that if we have negative infinity, we're going to get the same result. So now, let's find our inflection points and our critical points. So our critical points are going to be at negative 1 and 1, which we can see, sorry, not negative 1, and just 1, which we can see by looking at where y prime becomes undefined. And for our inflection points, we're going to have the same situation looking where y double prime is undefined or equal to zero. So now we have a nice little number line for both of these, and they both happen to line up quite nicely. So we're going to see what happens when we take values smaller and greater than one. So for critical points, if we plug in a value less than one, like zero, we'll get negative one over one, which is negative. And if we plug in a bigger value, we're going to get negative 1 over some positive value. So it's going to be negative on both sides of 1. That means that this whole graph is always going to be decreasing. As far as our inflection points go, when we pick a value less than 1, we are going to get, let's pick 0. We'll get negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1, and it will be 2 divided by negative 1. So we're going to get a negative value. If we pick a bigger number than 1, we'll end up getting a positive value. So, if it's above or below 1, it'll be decreasing. If it's above 1, it'll be concave up, and if it's below 1, it'll be concave down. So we know a lot about this graph so far. But first, let's check out some points here. Let's find f of 2. This will be 2 divided by 1. Let's pick f of 5. We're going to get that it'll be 5 divided by 4. Okay, so we have some points above 1. Let's find some points below 1. f of 0 will be 0. And f of negative 2 will be negative 2 over a negative 3, which is just going to be 2 thirds. Okay, so let's th switch to a thicker marker and start drawing these points. So 2 is going to be 2, 5 is going to be 5 fourths, so it'll look like this. Now how do we connect these points? Well, first of all, let's draw our asymptotes in here. So we know it can't touch x is equal to 1, and it also can't touch y is equal to 1. So it is decreasing. We found this by looking at a couple points. 
And if it's concave up, that means that it's going to kind of look like a smiley face. So we're going to get a graph that looks like this up here. And below, you're going to have f of 0 is equal to 0, and f of negative 2 is equal to 2 thirds. And it's concave down, so a picture that looks like this is going to be acceptable. And that will be the graph of our function. So, a lot of stuff to do. Here is your own to-do, and I'll be back in a second, and we'll check out the answer to this. Alright, hopefully you had enough time to try this one out. So, let's take a look at a few things. Uh, let's take our vertical asymptote, which we're going to have them at x is equal to 1, and x is equal to negative 1. And this is because we solve for x squared minus 1. Our horizontal asymptote is going to occur, well, we'll take the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x over x squared minus 1. This will be 2x over x squared if we take the highest power in each, which is the same as 2 over x, which of course is going to send it off to 0. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. Okay, our critical points. These are all the points where f prime is either equal to 0 or it's undefined. So we're going to have 1 and negative 1, just like our previous result. And for inflection points, this is where f double prime is either equal to 0 or undefined. So we're going to have a negative 1, 1, and 0. So, when we do our little number line here, we'll do them right on top of each other. We're going to get negative 1, 0, and 1. So now let's find our values and see where they are positive and negative. If we take a value below 1 for the critical points, we are going to get, we'll get a negative times a positive, all divided by a positive. So that section is going to be negative. When we take a value like say 0, we're going to get a negative times a positive all divided by a positive. So that'll also be negative there. And if we take a look greater than 1, we're going to get a negative times a positive all divided by a positive. So that'll also be negative. So this whole graph is going to be decreasing. So let's do inflection points now. With inflection points, if we take a negative number below 1, we're going to get a negative times a positive, all divided by a positive. Actually, if we have negative 2, it will end up being negative. Yes, yeah, so this whole graph will be negative here. Between negative 1 and 0, it's going to be positive, and then after 0 and 1, it will be negative, and then after 1, it will be positive. So, I skipped the calculations there, but this is what you should have ended up with. So now we have a bunch of information. Let's check out a couple points. f of 0 is going to be 0. f of 0 0.5 will be 1 over negative 0.75, so we're going to have negative 4 thirds, and if we do f of negative 0 0.5, then we should get 4 thirds or something like that. So, you can check out some more numbers. Just do a couple. We'll do f of 2. This will be 4 over 3. we do f of 5, we're going to get 10 over 24. If we do f of negative 2, we're going to get negative 4 over 3. And if we do f of negative 5, we're going to get negative 10 over 24. So, let's start filling in some points. We have a I'm going to use 
every line as 0.5. So when we have a 10 over here, this is actually a negative 5, and this 10 over here will be 10. So we have a horizontal asymptote here. Of course, we have a vertical asymptote at 0. OK. And now let's plug our points in. So at f of 2, we're going to have 4 thirds. It's the same thing as 1.33. So this will be about here. f of 5, the 10 24ths. So it's about right there. So it looks like we're going like this. Does this meet our conditions? Above 1, it's concave up. Yeah, it's concave up. And it's decreasing. Okay, that seems good. f of 0 is going to be 0. 0 0.5 is going to be negative 4 thirds. So we're going to get something down here and up here. So we seem to get a graph that kind of looks like this. So it's concave up in this interval, and it's concave down in this interval. And yes, we've shown that. OK, so our last section here, f of negative 2 is going to be negative 4 thirds. So we have something like here. And then we'll get something like this. So it will look just like this. So this is our final curve. This is our graph. And this is what the function looks like. And you did this all with calculus. So at this point, good job. Uh, we are now done curve sketching, but our critical points and inflectional point use are not over yet. It is now time to move into the wonderful world of optimization problems, which a lot of people really dislike, and I don't blame you. They can be difficult, but we'll spend a couple videos going over practice problems, and I will see you guys then.